with my co-host Sarah DeFelice and welcome to the Karen Reese Show. We have some surprises, readings, questions from our audience and a great guest known all over the world. Many of you may have heard about the Shadow People or Hat Man. Well, our guest Heidi Hollis is an author, talk show host and cartoonist offering insight into all mysteries from aliens to angels. We recently connected through Skype from her Chicago home. Here's part two of our interview. You're known for your work on the topic of the hat man and shadow people. Can you yeah. explain a little bit about these figures and how you use them in your platform to make them more aware of the paranormal world? <laughs> the shadow people <laughs> phenomena, I, I've always related it to the alien phenomena, believe it or not. Um, I didn't know what I was dealing with. I had seen ghosts before. Okay, I, I don't like them very much. And it's like they're very nosy to me. And, uh, and then I'd seen some UFOs and... But to see a black mass, I'm like, what is this thing? So shadow people are these things that could kind of shape shift into different shapes, like uh, a rodent, a cat, uh, something I, I describe as head and shoulder shadow. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's got dandruff. Um, but no, <laughs> his shoulders, it's looks like his head is directly connected to his shoulders. It's like there's no, uh, no neck to be seen and it kind of big hulking, uh, no feet. But uh, I have had some people that have written me and said, you know, I see this one and it has feet and has legs and it has arms. And I'm like, mm, okay. But I mean, it's a possibility. They could take on different forms. I just don't hear about those a ton. Um, these beings can influence negative things. They get into people's heads. Uh, their favorite pastime thing is to pin people down and like paralyze them, choke them. Um, People will say, oh, sleep paralysis. I'm like, sleep paralysis doesn't look the same. You know, you don't see the same kinds of garbage all the time, night and day. Um, and now, then there is something that's even worse than the shadow beings. Like, I, I see the shadow people as being like a minion to the hat man. And the hat man is this guy that wears a three-piece suit, trench coat, cape, sometimes a top hat. Um, sometimes he'll change up his outfit, but not a whole ton. Sometimes he doesn't even wear a hat, but, uh, his presence is so evil. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's so disturbing. It is so grotesque. The things that he says and does to people, I can't stand him because he goes after kids. He, I, I'd call him a pervert. I mean, he, he's just horrible. He bites, he scratches, he rapes, he reaches into people's chests and he pulls their soul out. I mean, how much worse can you get, to be honest? And uh, he tries to reap their souls. He tries to enslave their souls. Um, I mean, I have the reports in the thousands. I've heard reference to something called Slender Man. Is yeah, it the uh, Karen same mentioned Slender Man. Entity? I, Slender Man, I've learned that this uh, person that, that created the fictional character of Slender Man uh, was basing it off of reports of Hat Man. Okay, so, Hat Man. Man is the real phenomena, Slender Man is not. And you know, I'd never experienced Hat Man directly myself until a few weeks before I was publishing the book on him. He'd been behind me, he'd gone after my friends and family, but he never came in my face. He came at me, <laughs> he came at me just before I put the book out and he came at uh, one of my patients at work I mean, it, right after I spoke about him. And then two weeks after I put the, he was letting me know he was not happy. Two weeks after I published my book on the hat man, you guys heard of the slender man attacks with the two little girls attacked their little friend? Yes. That, that happened within a 15 minute drive of my parents' home. Oh. So I took it personally, sounds strange, but whenever I've had like, how can I say these waking dreams, like where something is being told to me, like a lesson or something, it's at my parents' home. I don't know why. It's always there. It could be on their property or in their house or in the front. It's always there. I don't know. That must be my reference point for weird psychic stuff. But um, yeah, so I took that really personally that it was within a stone's throw of my parents' home, you know? Um, so yeah, the Slender Man is not a, the real phenomena uh, the Hat Man is. What was the creepiest encounter, though, that you've ever heard regarding the Hat Man? And how did you navigate the encounter for them? Oh gosh, um, probably the worst experience that I'd come across. Um, geez, it, I didn't get to navigate it for them, but this is probably the worst. Uh, this is a seven-year-old 
at the time, and she's an adult, and she wrote me about this. And she said, you know, Hatman used to come into my bedroom every night. He's got to bend over, I mean, because he's going to hit the ceiling. He could be 10 feet tall, 12 feet tall, um, usually between uh, 6 feet, though, and 12 feet. <laughs> so she said he would come into the room, and he'd have to creep over, uh, hunch over her, and she was on the second bunk in her bedroom. And he would tell her, one day I'm going to get you. And he'd come nightly, and she was horrified. And she'd tell her mom, she'd go running down the hall, jump in her bed, and her mother was just getting irritated with it, like, you know, just quit this. And so the girls started sleeping with their light on, you know, to keep them awake. He doesn't like light, but he will come in the day daytime as well. But it does help to repel him a little bit. Um, so she would sleep with the light on. The mom's like, you know, light bills are going up. She took the light bulb out. <laughs> and so the little girl stepped still kept coming to her mom's bedroom, you know, and everything. But this one night it came to a head. Mom had a party. She didn't want the little girl coming out to the party. She took the light bulb out and she locked her in the bedroom. Oh. Later oh. in the evening, mom oh. came in the party still going on. Mom came to check on her. And now, you know, the, the wooden brackets that kind of mm -hmm. keep a kid into a bunk bed. Her daughter was hanging out of the bed by her neck with her head on the other side oh. of the wooden slats. Not physically possible. The, the mom had to call two guys to break the bed apart, get her out, resuscitate her. She said, with my first words, I sat up and I said, he got me. Thank you, Heidi. So great that you took the time to join us uh, on the show. If you would like to connect, you can go to HeidiHollis.com. Still ahead, Karen will read some people in our audience, but up next, we take some audience questions. Alexa's gonna take some questions from our audience. Thanks, Karen. What's your name, where are you from? Linda from Buffalo. I knew I had a Linda when I looked at you. That's why I said Linda. I felt Linda with you. You and I have that, me, you, and Linda. Okay, go on. <laughs> What's your question for Karen? Can, um, can you, as a psychic, can you see into the future at all? Well, that's kind of an oxymoron there, Linda. The word psychic does see right. to relate to that. <laughs> You're blind too, but yeah, actually you can. And there's no such thing as time on the other side. So, you know, you can see past, present, and future. You're welcome, that's a funny question. Hi, what's your name, where are you from? Julie from Lockport. Hi, Julie from Lockport. What's your question for Karen? Do you ever connect with your own family members? Oh, hell yes, I do, and I tell them to leave me alone, get back in the box, yes, I do. <laughs> or to give me a bigger, fat bank account. That's a great question, Julie. I'm gonna have them go visit you. Maybe you can talk some senses to them. <laughs> Hi, what's your name, where are you from? Um, I'm Chloe from Rochester, but I'm going to school at UB. Hi, Chloe from Rochester that goes to school from at UB. You're just so cute. Thank you. What's your question for Karen? Um, what made you want to pursue this full-time instead of being a stockbroker? You know, that's a great question. When I was a kid, I knew I would do this full-time, and I always thought, you know, I would do that when I was older. But as this type of energy, you just get pulled into it. Um, it's just weird how things happen, so I ended up doing it full-time. I've always done it my entire life. Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? Hi, I'm Susie from Maple, New York. Hi, Susie from Maple, trip. New York. You know, it's really weird. I kept thinking about Maple today. You're my Susie. You're my Susie syrup, okay. Should have brought you some. Oh, you should have. <laughs> my question is, do we age after we get to the other side? That is a great question. Um, typically, when you leave your physical, if you're in a higher dimension, you'll find that you look your healthiest, your most radiant. And most people feel that to be about the age of 30, and you'll think very clearly. Love the lace. Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? I'm Jen from Buffalo. Hi, Jen from Buffalo with a cute lace top. Well, Love your earrings. You. you work it. <laughs> Um, when you connect with spirits, does it physically affect you? Like, do you get tired or headaches or hungry? You know, that's a great question. Um, it depends on the spirit. It's a lot of energy because my energy grid is different than yours and theirs on the other side. So I can get very tired, migrainy. If they're miserable, sometimes I'll pick up their miserableness. Um, but it does drain your energy and people don't realize it. 
Uh, so a lot of times, you know, you gotta get your rest and you know, eat, sleep, drink, and eat chocolate. Good question. Reading's up next. I gotta tell you, I've had so many crazy people, but I did have a couple of sons actually come to me, and you obviously have a son on the in the spirit realm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, because he kept saying over there, and then somebody says, "No, my mother." So I had two people trying to fight, and then I had this kidnapping thing all at once going. Like you are popular people, I'll just have you know. Um, What's the April or May connection around you? Who's got a birthday or passing or an anniversary? My son. Yeah, his birthday? Is in April. He's laughing because it's my month. I'm in April too. Couldn't wait to see you, Mom. Were you thinking about packing and doing, or redoing doing some changing clothes or getting rid of clothes or something? I just did that yeah. this past weekend. He says, good job, Mom. He says, I'm laughing all the way. He goes, I love you so much. Did you get a plaque or something for him or something you'd put outside or something? I just... His headstone was laid when I put his ashes in with my dad. He loves it. The, the boys are, you know, roughing it out. Don't worry about it, your father said. Um, who's Mark? Is that a friend of yours? M-A-R, Mark? No. Uh oh I got a Mark coming in. Okay, I just heard Mark over pointing to you. You're connected to Mark? Okay, you, you're all killing me today. Hold your horses there. Um, anyways, your son's laughing. He likes what you did as far as his headstone is concerned. He goes, that's really cool, Mom. Did you put his picture on it or you were thinking about putting a picture on it? I put a picture of a buck because he's a hunter. Oh, that's why he's, he said yeah, he loves the picture. I love the picture. So does your dad. He goes, I didn't get that luck. You shortchanged your father. <laughs> that's right. My stepmom only put a cross. Oh, she's no fun. <laughs> he's laughing about that. Your son is doing really well. He goes, Mom, I'm having fun. And he said, you know, when I released from the body, he goes, I felt fantastic. And he said, it was truly my time. You couldn't have done anything different. He keeps your father out of trouble, just so you know. <laughs> I believe yeah. that. And you'll see him in your dreams. And he said, when you get to the other side, he goes, don't worry, Ma. He goes, the life is just like a full circle. You come, you go, you come, you go, you come, you go. Not to worry about that. But you did a lot of work with the clothes, didn't you? I did. Yeah, your father says you can do it at my house tonight. So go to, <laughs> out of body tonight and see your dad. OK, now I got to go with you. Who's this Mark connection? My son. The past? passed six years ago. Oh my God, I have everybody's sons today. I love this. I like looking at young, hot looking men. <laughs> I can see them better than you can. Okay, hang on, Mark. I got them all talking. Jeez. I kept hearing different voices. No, my mom. Oh, that's my mother. Like they were just talking. Um, were you hoping to talk to Mark today? Yes. Pardon me? You were hoping to talk to Mark today? Yeah. 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 You're the best mother ever. I just want you to know, mom. And he goes, you know what? I've been seeing you ever since I left. And he says, I laugh when you all talk about me. So when you're giggling about the, you know, things that Mark did when he was younger, he thinks it's hilarious. And he does like to play tricks on you too. So he likes to touch your head. So sometimes you might think, oh, I just got an itch or, you know, something awkward like that. Right. It's cr truly Mark. I got to tell you, Mark was in my house today when I was getting ready. You should have done the dishes. He goes, whatever. He's lucky. I think he's got like a maid on the other side because he says, I don't do much housework. He goes, that's woman's work. Your, husband, your son's kind of funny, by the way. Um, you were looking at his picture recently or looking at some pictures, yes? Yeah, yeah. occasionally. Yeah. yeah. He's laughing. He's with dad, too. Um, he also said, Mom, hang on, you're talking really fast. I guess you were a good dancer back in the day, huh? Back in the day, you were a good dancer. You loved to dance? Yeah? I did, but I wasn't a dancer, just school shows. Oh, but that was a good dancing. I, I got two left feet. So I couldn't even do that. Um, did your son pass around his birthday or your birthday? He's, he passed around somebody's birthday he's talking well, about. I, I recently had a birthday. Okay. Oh, then it's your birthday. Okay. Happy birthday to you. But Mark said something he passed around somebody's birthday. Quick question, too. Did somebody do any kind of awareness with Mark in mind? T-shirts, one of his friends or something? He says, they cheer for me. Some of my friends do some sort of salute or something. You may not know of it, but he's talking about that. What's that, Mark? Just know I'm okay, Mom. And he said, don't worry. I won't see you, for, see you for a while, but when you get here, we'll have a big party, too. So God bless you on that one. Well, thank you. Okay. I got to go to another one right over here. You know what's funny? I got to tell you, your boys, the three of you, they kind of are together, and it kind of makes sense. They're having fun since they came to the show. They said, why not? We know how to party. Clearly, your boys do. Your son's laughing, too, by the way. Do you drive like crap, by the way? Yes? 
Do my what? Do you drive like crap? I can't say the S word because I'll get in trouble, but <laughs> your son's laughing about that. Quick question, does your knee bother you or your hip yet? I've had knee replacements. And, yeah, yeah, because your I'm son's like, talking about like your knees being an issue and your hips too, but you're pretty tough though, your son said yes. I guess so, yes. Yeah, you are. Is there a Sam connection around you or Sandy, Sam, Sam? Who's that? My dad. Oh, he's with your father then. Okay, got it. Oh, is he? It. Yeah, yeah, because he says, tell Sam, Sam's here. Okay, hold your horses there. <laughs> Sam's funny. Your dad's a good guy. You know that? Great he, guy. He says he's the best. You better give him good answers because you know he's still your father. <laughs> your son said to tell you, Mom, we're having a really good time. And they, what's it? They know how to eat well, too, on the other side. And you're a good cook, too. You're a good cook. Wow, you got a big family of cooks. Hang on. What's that? Um, he listens to you when you talk to your son still, just so you know. All the time. Yeah, he goes, Mom, I still listen to you. He goes, I don't want you to have a heavy heart. He says, when you're happy, I'm very happy. And he says, look, he said, we knew before we came in, when, before we reincarnated, that my life wouldn't be that long, um, you know, that I would be here for a short period, but that God had other plans. And by the way, you've been your son's mom in every lifetime, just so you know. And your father says she sure knows how to crack the whip. Your father's funny, by the way. <laughs> um, do you go for chiropractic adjustments too? You're supposed to, that's what your son said. You haven't done them yet? No, I haven't. Oh, get a massage while you're at it. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> do all of the above. Your father's laughing, he goes, I feel really good. Sam's doing well, just so you know. And your mother keeps them in line, just so you know on that one. Um, did you want to, hang on everybody, you're talking. Did somebody, wait, did you con do construction on a house or something or you want to, Build a new house? What is your son talking about? I moved. About? We downsized and I completely remodeled before we moved in. Oh, that's what he's talking about. You did some work on a house. And new. Oh, he loves the new house. So does right. your dad. Your mom likes it, too. She likes the kitchen, the finishing work. You did a nice job, didn't you? Oh, thank you. I hope so. Yeah, your son <laughs> says it's a great place. Do you know your house has so many people from the other side, including your grandparents? Do you eat a lot of nuts, by the way? Who eats lots of nuts in your household? Who likes nuts? My husband. I was just going to say that. It has to be your husband, yeah. Because your son said something about eating a lot of nuts. It's good for you, too. I just had some for breakfast. Yeah, I like your kitchen. Do you ever see lights flickering in your kitchen or just in the house in general? It's your son. I do. Yeah. And I hear the footprints, and I hear a, a lot of things. Yeah. yeah, you have a lot of activity. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, and that's your friggin' family. They love okay. it. <laughs> I know that. That's a good word, by the way. <laughs> but by the way, your son says, Mom, because we're always there, just checking in. Um, who's got the December, January? Was that your mother's birthday or passing? Who's got that? I'm going into the winter season. Who's that? January? That yeah, who's that that your son's talking about? Who has or who had a birthday or a passing or an anniversary? Who's passed? Her sister. Oh. That was in January. Oh, they're going to have a big party for January. Oh, I thought you because your mother was talking about it. I'm like, you're killing me today. Everybody's talking in, at once today. You're killing me. Yeah, they're going to have a big party. So over here, we have a good party. We love to shop. We love to have fun, and we eat well. So your son says, no more crying. He goes, I'll see you when you get to the other side. I'll see you in your dreams. I love you so much. Give Dad a hug and a kiss. And don't worry about me, Mom. I'm very happy. I'll catch up with you later. So look for the noises, and, or listen for the noises, look for the lights. God bless you. Thank you. Prizes coming up next. Welcome back to the show. We have lots of great gifts to give away. We love Chef's Italian food, and now you can enjoy Chef's on the Go at Williamsville Place. Some of our studio audience will receive a $25 gift certificate to dine in or my favorite, takeout. Plus, a member of our audience will receive a bottle of oil from Devolio's. From their gourmet oils, balsamic vinegars, and delicious food, Devolio's is a Karen Reese favorite. Check out their menu, locations, and shops all over Western New York at Devolio's.com. Plus, several members of our studio audience who are of age will receive a bottle of Merit Estate wine. This holiday season, celebrate with the wine made right here in Forestville, New York. Get more information at MeritEstateWinery.com. Our final prize is a private one-on-one -on -one re reading with Karen. During the break, we selected two contestants at random who will play some Karen Reese trivia. Whoever gets two out of the three questions correct by ringing their bell will win the reading. And if we have a tie, then we will select a winner from the tickets in the box. We welcome Pam and Jamie. Nice to be here. Okay, are you ready? Do you understand the rules? 
<laughs> okay. Question number one. Most psychics are tested to have a 50% accuracy in their readings. At what percentage was Karen tested? A, 60%, B, 80%, C, 98%. Jamie was first. 98%. Correct. Yes. I think she got 100% on that question. <laughs> How great was that? Okay, question number two. Where is Karen's office currently located? A, Main Street in the village of Williamsville, B, Hurdle Avenue, or C, Worley Drive? This is Jamie again. I don't know when this is a guess. I was just on the website, but Main Street in Williamsville. You've got it. <laughs> we'll ask the third question, just for the heck of it. Okay. What is the name of Karen's daily positivity spiritual post on social media? A, daily dose of spirit, B, medium mindfulness, C, from spirit to you. Pam? A. No. no. Want to try it? Medium mindfulness. That's it. Oh. Medium mindfulness. Look at it online. <laughs> daily post. Congratulations, Congratulations. Jamie. Congratulations, thanks for joining us for another great Karen Reese show. Remember, you can get tickets and information on our next TV tapings at WBBZ.com. Please, you can find us, plus, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're all over social media. Remember, it's important that we live each day to the fullest so that we can reach our goals of health, happiness, wealth, creativity, and joy. Did you live your intention today? Thanks for watching. My name is Anna from Orchard Park. Orchard oh, Park. Anna, Ooh, tell us all about the horses that your parents are telling me about the horses. What's the horse connection? They love the horses. Well, my uncle was a big bookie. Oh, uh, no wonder why right. we didn't like you. <laughs> I told you OTB. Yes. That's why I'm doing yes. OTB. Yes, and so we always went to Fort Erie, and my brother bought my mother a horse, and oh. um, my mother used to let me skip school on Mondays to go to Fort Erie, and I was a little girl and I was allowed to bat because my uncle was so popular. I didn't know he had to be a certain age. Oh, you had the connection. And so, yes, yeah, so I was able to go bat. I didn't know why all the men would go, come to the bathroom and fouled him. Um, he also, they made him special muffins and did it, um, clean his shoes and everything like that. Wow. So, so we did know the tips. One of the tips, you don't bet the horses, you bet the good jockeys. Oh. Also, the other tip is at the end of the year, they let the losers win so they can pay for the barn fees and they can come back the following year. Oh, I love this. This is like insider information. <laughs> it yeah. is. I, love it. I know. And then I my love mother it. and my brother bought my mother a horse, and oh. I actually went, my, I grew up at Fort Erie. Oh my gosh, I told you we had a Canadian around here. No, but I'm not Canadian. Canadian. But you had Canadian connections. Well, you're yeah. telling me, yes. God save the queen. I love your uncle. We're going to hit him up for some tips how, a week. How, how we need tips. He Definitely was, he was an Irishman. And he also, at that time, um, the bookie place was uh, at one of our old stadiums in um, Buffalo with the mayor. He did it with the, one of our oh mayors. Oh my God, do you know what kind of book you could be writing, <laughs> Annie? I find that fascinating. I wonder yes. why I kept seeing oh. OTB.